Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson from Clarinet Mentors, and today I have a bass clarinet with me. I realize that a lot of people in the Clarinet Mentors community play small clarinets or saxophones, and they come at clarinet with the experience of many instruments. So what I want to talk about today is some things to consider if you're learning bass clarinet as a second or third or fourth instrument, if you're doubling on bass clarinet. Uh, so I'm assuming you already have some knowledge of the clarinet or saxophone and how they work. And I'm just going to talk about some of the special considerations that will help you succeed on bass clarinet a little bit faster. So if you're coming from clarinet, one of the first things you're going to notice is that the mouthpiece is much bigger than a clarinet mouthpiece. And really I think that's the main thing we have to get accustomed to when we switch instruments. Coming from little clarinet to big clarinet, to bass clarinet, the fingering is identical, so we don't have fingering issues. If you're coming over from saxophone, some of the fingering's different, and that does take a little getting used to, and that's just simply playing easy patterns and scales until your brain gets hardwired on a new fingering system. But as far as mouthpiece goes, really some of the same rules apply across all of these reed instruments. What we want is the reed to vibrate as much as possible, and generally, that means we want to put as much mouthpiece in our mouth as we comfortably can. Uh, most mouthpieces sort of have a limit where the closer we get to it, the more resonant our sound is, and as we cross it, it starts to get distorted and sound not so good. On the little clarinets, it's really clear. Usually we cross the line and we get a horrible squeak. Not quite as evident on bass clarinet, but it's definitely worth experimenting with how much mouthpiece you put in your mouth. Odds are if you're coming from a smaller mouthpiece, like clarinet or maybe alto sax, you're not going to be wanting to put enough mouthpiece in your mouth at first, and you're going to have to train yourself to put a little bit more in. What you can do is just put it in your mouth to blow. Um, I might not even be covering any of the holes, so I'm just playing my open G, and I might just try a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, and notice what happens to the sound. Now as we put more in our mouth, the mouthpiece is bigger, so we do need to open up a little bit more. Sometimes I, I get that effect by just thinking of my corners wrapping in. It kind of naturally puts me in that shape. Or I might even play a few notes. Let's see if through the computer you can hear a difference as I put more mouthpiece in my mouth. I'm just going to play some very simple notes here. Now that's just a tiny bit of mouthpiece. I, I found it hard to make much sound, but nonetheless I did get some notes. Now I'll put a bit more in. Well, that was much easier to play, and it sounded like I got much more sound. Now I'll put a bit more in. Yeah, seems a little bit better. Let's go more. Now, although I got a lot of sound at this end, that was a little bit squawky and honky. I'm not sure what you can hear through the computer, but I feel like I'm pushing the edge of good taste there. So I'm going to go sort of somewhere experimenting in that range between my last two and just see which one I like. Sometimes as you're doing this you're going to find it squeaky or pinch sounding and that might indicate although you might be on the right track to have more mouthpiece you're still trying to accommodate with your jaw a smaller size mouthpiece and you're going to have to get used to opening up a bit wider. Um, a great way to practice that is simply to do the whisper technique on bass clarinet where you loosen your jaw so much that although your teeth are anchored and you're sort of shaping an embouchure, you're just blowing air into the instrument, literally whispering. Sometimes doing that, even while fingering whatever it is you're playing, helps us to sort of get the feel for what we want to do. So it's just a great kind of warm-up exercise. Also, when you do that on bass clarinet, you'll see there's very little air resistance and you run out of air really quickly. A great way to help your air adjust to this instrument is to do that whisper technique, making it as loud as you can. You're going to run out of air much more quickly than when you're actually playing, so you might have to take a breath every three or four seconds. That's okay. It's, it's a warm-up exercise. I find if I do that a little bit, and then I actually try playing, I'm ready to use these deep muscles and push my air really well through the instrument. So how much mouthpiece we put in and how open our jaw is, is one of the things we need to get used to when we're switching instruments and, and wanting to get a big full sound on bass clarinet. Now a little bit more advanced than that is what we call the voicing, the shape of our tongue inside of our mouth as we're playing bass clarinet. 
So coming from a clarinet background as I do, classical clarinet background, we want our tongue to be quite high on the little clarinet, as if we're saying he. That's probably a little higher than we need on bass clarinet. It's a little bit more open space we're blowing into. Although we still want our air to be quite fast, it's not quite as small as the regular clarinet is. So uh, what works for me is to think more of a hue sort of sound. Different people have different voicings they like to say, but for me, that's what works. So I sort of think of a hue. This puts it a little bit closer to most saxophone, uh, saxophone mouthpieces. So you can experiment a little bit. And one way to experiment is just take a note, you could even take your open G, and just try and, while you're blowing it, move your tongue as if you're going and kind of notice what you hear if I did that. <laughs> So what I heard is when I started really high in a good classical small clarinet position, the sound was a little bit thin. As I lowered it a bit, it opened up and was quite resonant. And then as I lowered it more, it started to get a bit distorted and by the end a little bit fuzzy sounding. So it really does make a difference. Again, everyone's mouth is different. You need to find what works for you, but that's worth experimenting with until you find the voicing that works well on your bass clarinet. Now another thing you have a bit of control over is the angle that the mouthpiece makes to your face. And your bias might be influenced by what your primary instrument is. If you're primarily a little clarinet player, I keep saying little clarinet just to distinguish it from bass clarinet, a regular B flat clarinet, you're probably accustomed to the mouthpiece coming into your mouth at a much more vertical angle than the way the bass clarinet is designed. And for some people, that's kind of awkward. It doesn't work so well. For other people, that feels great. Um, if you come in from a saxophone background, this angle is more familiar and probably will feel more natural to you. But you're going to get different results based on where the angle is. So I really encourage you to, as you get comfortable on the instrument, experiment with the angle that you hold your clarinet at. So, you know, the most stable position for the bass clarinet is for it to be upright. However, at least with my neck, that puts this at quite a horizontal angle. For me, that's not necessarily the best sounding one. And perhaps I would test that out in the higher register because I think the high notes are a little bit more sensitive. So let's say I'm just slurring my way up a, a C scale or something in the high register. For me, when my clarinet's upright, bass clarinet's upright, I can play, but it feels a little bit awkward. <laughs> So for me, kind of being accustomed to my clarinet being a little more upright, what I'm going to do is pull my bell, bell in under my chair a little bit. Now my clarinet's leaning outward, so if this was uncomfortable, you might use a neck strap just for balance, although I've never dropped my bass clarinet yet. But what this does is it brings that in at a little bit more comfortable angle. If you do that adjustment, you may need to adjust your peg a little bit, which I'm going to do right now because it made my mouthpiece a little bit higher. So it, you have to experiment with the right angle. But now if I try that same scale, um, I hesitated at the top because it felt like it was going to tip over. So at that angle, I probably would have my mouthpiece uh, or my neck strap on just for balance there. But um, what I feel is that it's more resonant. Now, that's a fairly extreme angle for bass clarinet. That might not work for you. Again, it's just something to consider and experiment with as you figure out what works best for your face. All right, how we blow, pretty similar to all these other single reed instruments that we're doing. Generally, the bigger the instrument, if I was just to stereotype, the, the bigger our airstream is. So on the little clarinet, we're focused to that power wash, very fast and small. This one might be just one notch more open. It's a bit bigger airstream, maybe not quite as fast as the little clarinet. However, really, it's a big, long instrument. We do want the air to go all the way through the bottom of the tube, so we need deep, deep support for it. So all the breathing exercises you do for your clarinets and your saxophones apply to this one. And we want you know, good, strong, steady air support. I'll put some links here to some of my clarinet blowing and breathing exercises, which really work great on bass clarinet. Um, 
and just know as you get used to it, you'll probably naturally find you have a slightly bigger, tiny bit slower airstream. I don't even like to plant the seeds for thinking slow air though, because usually we don't have fast enough air. So thinking of fast air is generally a good idea, even on bass clarinet. All right, a couple other things I'll just throw your way. Um, if you're someone who's doing a lot of doubling or tripling, whether you're in a jazz group or maybe you're sitting in a pit orchestra where you're switching between clarinet and alto sax and flute and then bass clarinet, I have discovered a type of reed that I find really handy in those situations. So most of the time I'll play a cane reed. I happen to like Van Doren V12, but there's lots of good reeds out there. Um, what I have here is a Legere signature reed. And I have to confess, I'm someone who's kind of had a bit of a prejudice against plastic reeds because I've heard so many that don't sound good that I was really resistant to, to trying them and playing them out. But this particular one, the Legere Signature, it comes in a black box, is quite good. And um, I actually have played it professionally recently. I had a show where my bass clarinet would sit for quite a long time, but I'd have something like 10 seconds to put down my clarinet and grab this and play and it had to sound good right away. And I wouldn't have time to prepare the reed to get it wet to make sure it's still working. And sometimes in those instances a cane reed can warp or dry out and it's just not going to feel good when I pick it up. These plastic reeds are always the same. It could be totally dry and it's going to play. And um, it was reliable. And so for me, even though if I you know, compared it to my best cane read, it's maybe not quite as good. It was good enough to play professionally for the kind of show I was doing. And I felt really comfortable, which is probably important too for you as a player. So actually I'll give you a, a bit of a sound clip of what this particular read sounds like. Again, I don't know how much you hear through the computer speakers, but what I'll do is um, I'll just play a scale with my wooden read and then I'll put on the Legere signature read for you to hear and you can see if this might be right for you. My understanding is one of these plastic reeds uh, lasts about as long as a regular box of cane reeds. What I liked about it is that it was a two and a half hour show. It just sat on the reed, on the mouthpiece the whole time. I didn't have to do anything with it. Whereas I'd probably go through a few cane reeds in that much time. All right, so this reed I have on is not a spectacular wooden reed, but it's a pretty good one. I'll just play a couple things and then I'll try and play the same thing on the, the Legere reed. Now I've put on the Legere Signature Reed, which I find run just a tiny bit stiffer than the V12. That's my opinion. I know they're supposed to be about the same. I feel they're a little bit stiffer, but they also come in quarter strength, so it's kind of easy to go a little bit softer. Anyway, here's what this one sounds like. <laughs> I think I played something similar to the first time. So you can compare the two. To me, it is pretty responsive. Now, right up close, you know, you might want to not want to use this in an audition or something like that, but boy, I really like it. I have to say, I like the Legere reeds better on bass clarinet than I do on little clarinet. And uh, for the ease and consistency and comfort, I really like it. So something for you to consider. So hopefully that's helpful to you as you're switching to bass clarinet or, or learning it. And I'd love to hear from you. You might have your own pointers to share. There's a comments box right under this YouTube video. And please do put your comments and questions in there. I check in about once a week and respond to those. And if you're not already a member of the Clarinet Mentors community, I invite you to join. It's totally free. You would go to www.learnclarinetnow.com and you'll see a spot to fill in your name and email address. When you're a member of the community, I send out a newsletter about every two to three weeks, and I always include an educational video, like today's, usually related to a little clarinet, but perhaps I'll start throwing more bass clarinet information in there. I also recommend my favorite pieces of clarinet gear that are handy to know about. Sometimes that's specifically for clarinet, sometimes it's just good things that a musician should have. And if there are special events, I'll make sure that you find out about them. If it's not a good fit for you, you can unjoin any time, but I invite you to sign up, be part of my community. I thank you for watching today's video, and I hope you have fun on your bass clarinet.